friends around the world. I'm going to do a little more reading from the book that I read from before. But this time I'm not going to read straight through it. I'm going to read what's called the uh, encoded... What is it? What does he call it? Uh, on the sides... On the side of the chapters, it has... Or on the side of every page, the first letter and the third letter and the fifth letter and the seventh letter all the odd rows we circle the first letter of each one it has a little kind of like a summary of the chapter in in a, in a way and then there's an another section which is called or another kind of um what what does he call this here uh let's see the book is dedicated okay keep all under wraps Okay, I forget what he calls it. And then they have what's called word stacking, which I'll do that. I'll read that later. After I read the sidelines, I'll read the, the word stacking. So it's kind of like a. I wished actually that this encoded section was actually different from the chapter. Like it gives some new secret messages that he didn't reveal in the chapter. But so far, I haven't yet found that. So it's just kind of like a re rehashing of the chapter. So I'm going to read this because it's not against copyright law to read this because it's an encoded message that isn't straight reading. It's just reading down the side of the page. So here we go. From the preface on, it goes, Billy's back and the memoirs of Billy Shears. So I'm reading actually from Billy's back, which is an excerpt version of the full memoirs of Billy Shear, which I have in the car. So I'm going to go back and circle all those. This is what I did when I first got the first book. I went through and, and highlighted all the letters. Okay, so now if I read down the uh, word stacking. Oh, this one doesn't have many more. It says, Billy's back, Beatles Enlightenment, the memoirs of Billy Keir, the memoirs of Billy Shears. That's all the way. And it just says, this is word stacking. So they just showed you how word stacking goes um, in the... In that one, there's not really any word stacking. Okay. Next part says kids. Oh, that's both the same. Okay, it says Paul in the table of contents. Okay, starting from the dreams of Paul, it says, At first, if I'm reading down, At first, you may say Paul is a dreamer, but he is not the only one. This is reading down. From the time I joined him, our dreams have have made. Oh, our dreams have made us together as one dream. Sweet dreams form. Okay, I think that's the end of the sentence. There's no way to figure out where the sentence should end, but anyway. I believe it's there because the next one says, I was introduced to LSD and other drugs by John and George. It's a trip from, from LC, which is uh, short for Lewis Carroll. So it says, from LC... From Elsie's dream, that's what it is. This one's a little broken. From, let me see, from Elsie dream, dream of me, be happy. Hello, that's all. Oh, hello, mom, Julia. That's his mom, Julia. Okay, so that's just the first Dreams of Paul chapter if you read down the side. Now I'm going to read what's the word stacking in that chapter. Okay, the word stacking, it's kind of sounds kind of funny. Everything was made possible because Paul had me, William Shepard. I am that I am. The music surpassed everyone within him based on nightmares. Oh, no, the, okay, the music surpassed everyone. Within him, based on nightmares, those dreams engendered songs. John saw it and had gone totally mad. 
Paul sure would upset a girl passenger. Paul just had to go. Paul hired session musicians. I'm in Paul. I'm a fab. Here he meets a girl all in the same home. I'm entering my death world. Paul had things like his name. I dreamed of it from previous Paul from previous Paul such dreams I have as Paul's brother altering my correct certain stories I have learned. I get peace here. It has been in my dreams. With all my bit, I understand my life. These sentences are kind of weird because he's taking highlighted words down the page, and that's called word stacking. Sometimes they're not grammatically perfect, but he's trying to get a me another message apart, or, or like um, he's trying to just give a synopsis of the of the story based on these these word stackings. I tried to make a religious feeling like a virgin. I would know too much to be destroyed by LSD. I was the first promoting LSD. I convinced them all advertisement. I convinced them all advertisement that I was inconsistent with history. I don't understand a lot of these ones. I actively promoted LSD along with John. I'm going to read that sentence again. I convinced them all advertisement that I was inconsistent with history. Don't understand that fully. Okay. To get his party directly together, minded on LSD, I was fixedly passionate. This one album, especially with LSD, or Lucy in the Skies with Diamonds, was the new door. I have been distorted. Your picture is the opposite of real perception. John's looking among beds of weeds with her microphone. There's another one stacking here that... So they have bold face stacking, and then they have these like kind of hyphenated stacking ones, which are kind of harder to read because they just they used a different font. So I don't know which ones are which sometimes. Okay. So LSD, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, dreams still play a big part for songs. I dream of good lines. I could repeat much of these dreams. Dreams, dream of me going into Paul is dead. Let me say everything in this book. I'm broken. John dreamt of harmony. I found it meaningful. Here, his mother, like mine, led to songs. I will explain backward recording and life-changing dreams. She was Julia. So his his mom was Julia, John Lennon's mom, and so was, uh, I think it was also Billy Shear's mother's was named Julia too, and his mother died early, like John's did. I think that was the story. I can't remember. I'm going from memory. Okay, so the next chapter is called Stuart was the Martyr, and I'm going to read first the down the down way. As I continue in Paul. So does he continue through me. That was all the, down the side of the one chapter. And now I'm going to read the stacking. Part of each of us died. Paul's life embodies Billy's, Billy. I have him as part of me. Paul can see beyond myself. I was meant to be connected to Paul, but still with them all. I am their best Paul. Paul died of an injury. No one had any idea how John shouted obscenities. Paul told me it finished Stu. If Stu had missed the Beatles, 
Paul would still be alive. If Stu had missed the Beatles, Paul would still be alive. In consequence, I would still be a session musician. Okay. I read that chapter about Stu dying, and I don't know how that relates to Paul would still be alive. Maybe because John Lennon would have died, and that would have been later I found out from what he believes to be the reason why both Paul died and John Lennon died, and almost the uh, George Harrison almost died the same way by a killer, was because they made a pact with the devil before he joined the band, and he wasn't into Satan worship like they were at first. Uh, they were kind of joking with it, but he says they fucked up because they were even joking with it. It became true. And that Paul only died in an accident, so it didn't it didn't uh, finish the pact they had with the devil. So this is kind of weird. It's in the it's in the middle of the the longer book. It's the more satanic murders chapter, which I didn't read all of. I read part of the first chapter that was. I forget what it's called. So, <clears throat> so he believes that Paul died because of this pact with the devil, and that's why this de so-called devil worshiper from Hawaii killed him, or John, sorry. Uh, I believe another story. I believe that that guy was actually um, MK Ultra programmed assassin, um, because of a lot of the MK Ultra programmed assassin assassinators, um, they did like he did. When he shot John, he stayed there and waited for the police. And right when the police got there, he said, "I acted alone." No one who's a Satan worshiper who killed John because of the Satan message and he thought he was in the songs were meant to kill him would have uh, done that unless he was fucking programmed to do that. So I don't believe that story about that but anyway if Stu had missed the Beatles Paul would still be alive in consequence I would still be a session musician so if Paul didn't die this guy would be a session musician he wouldn't have became the new Paul but I don't understand how if Stu missed the Beatles Paul would still be alive maybe I don't know anyway I'm reading on just the just the word stacking he wanted to always tell me things I never knew. So the new Paul McCartney, just like the old Paul McCartney, had dreams about the future. The old Paul McCartney had dreams about him dying. The new Paul McCartney had dreams about him talking to the dead Paul, in which he channeled a lot of the songs he said he channeled f through him or from him. And he also channeled the ability to play left-handed bass because he was practicing for many months. And then finally one day he was at John Paul's house because that's what he moved in the full on the hill he moved up in the big house on the hill uh the man with a thousand voices aka billy Shear. and one night he was doing they were doing a seance and after that he started playing paul's bass and all of a sudden it felt completely natural which it never had felt before because he was a right-handed bass player not a left-handed bass player he's also a very good right-handed guitar player and he's also a very good piano player and he's also plays a few other instruments unlike the original paul and he also arranges and does so many things better than Paul. Okay, so this is going down this the side called Paul Worked It Out. It says Paul, I'm reading down the side. Paul worked it out. Life is very short. And there's no time for fussing and fighting. So that song was about him working out his death and the replacement and not to, because everyone was fighting him about it. And he was like, no, you got to do it the way I say it. If you go the way you say it, it's not going to work out. I'm going to fucking die before I get a replacement. So he, he was trying to tell everyone, all the all the people were arguing with him about it. And that song was about working it out after his death or before his death. Okay, fussing and fighting. I'm going to read that again. Time, no time for fussing and fighting, my friend. I have always thought that it's a crime. So I ask you once again, again, to work it out. Okay, now I'm going to do the word stacking for that chapter. That's Paul worked it out. 
And that'll bring back a lot of memories from what I read before, hopefully. Okay, it says, Paul seemed freaked out seeing me. So one day when Paul was at a party and he had dreams about who his replacement was and then he saw this guy that seemed like the guy in his dream and it was really the guy who replaced him later on. But it didn't look enough like him, but it looked like the guy in his dream, so he kind of freaked out and left the party. Okay, Paul's out of it now. Paul felt omens. I could have been Jane was from heaven. It could have been Jane was from heaven. So the new Paul McCartney took over his girlfriend, not only his house and his money and everything, he also took over his girlfriend. Uh, but they didn't really have a, much of a really strong relationship after Paul died. It just she, He just felt like comforting her and getting to know her so he can get to know more of how to be like Paul. So they all agreed to work it out together. Not necessarily to have a romantic or loving relationship, but just to kind of hang out so that people wouldn't think there was some weird thing going on. Paul had psyched himself out. Paul focused his fear into tormenting dreams. Paul's trauma was over negative thoughts, Jim said. Jim was his uh, brother. And his brother and father kept telling him, stop talking about your dreams because it's going to become true. It's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy if you talk about it too much and you think about it too much because these dreams are re reoccurring because you're thinking about them so much. And it's probably going to really happen in reality because that's what happens when you start dreaming a dream and you make it real. <clears throat> he was dying to foretell his own death. I actually got it. I raised my own Paul that worked with me. This is after the seance. A death became Paul's. I became focus. I became him. That's weird. Why is the focus there? Paul's focus. Oh, death became Paul's focus. I became him. I see they're stacked on this side and stacked on this side. Oh, is that how it goes? Okay, some of the stacking you have to read on one side and the other. Okay, maybe I was reading those other ones wrong. Paul's out of it now. Paul felt omens. No, I'm gonna I'll go back and check it out again, but sometimes the stacking goes a few bars on one side and a few bars on the same side of the page, so it's not supposed to be read across, and that's maybe why I was it was sounding confusing. I'll go back and check that out later. Okay, a death became Paul's focus. I became him. I played along with the band because of Paul's attention that I owed him. I owed to him. Paul can work a double meaning in this book. Try to see it. To be with him running out. I am Paul's. I will explain the love lost for family and friends. I was in the death. Oh, I was in the death. I was in the death. Most people have thought that Paul's Paul is replaceable. Most people thought that Paul is replaceable. Unless his love would love, unless his love would love, their love is good night. That's about the song, We Can Work It Out, but I can't remember reading this whole chapter before. I, too, had help later, Thomas, Thomas Decker. I, too, had help later by Thomas. Okay, turn this way. I gave it the context. I had Paul for myself. Paul's into me. I will sing in Paul's place, wanting to give that weight. Paul had been lifted. I've carried those secrets. I think his way was up. I see that they worked out the worst of it. Okay, the next chapter is called Paul's Girls, about the pregnancies he had. So I'll read down the side again each uh 
first letter of the first line, third line, fifth line, seventh line, ninth line, eleventh line, all the odd, all the odd lines. It says, "Sorry, but I do not know how many children Paul had besides Michelle, Michelle, my belle, so les mon qui bon très bien ensemble." Okay. Besides Michelle. Add and bet Tina, Tina or Bettina, some some touring performers after each concert select an audience member to make it with. So he said it was just common practice for very famous musicians at the time to just select any one of the members in the audience and to tell the balancer or tell the uh, the security or whatever, give them a hundred extra hundred bucks or two hundred bucks, say go find that girl and give her, you know, the backstage pass and we're gonna I'm gonna party with her tonight. And that's they would just select one. So he could have got many other people pregnant other than they think Bettina and uh, Michelle Michelle was the daughter of one of the other girls who got pregnant. Uh, I forget the name. Okay. So now I'm going to read down the stacking and see if I can get it right this time on this chapter, Paul's Girls. It says, I learned more while being Paul. I have to take Paul's lifetime. I am sorry he had not accept, he did not accept his children. So he paid off um, one family, uh, and the other one, he, his uh, producers paid off a few other that they s said got pregnant uh, to stay silent before they finally paid off another one, alimony and everything, went to court about it. Uh, and that daughter later on tried to sue the new Paul, but he said, I'm not your father, and I'll do a DNA, DNA test, and he did a DNA test, and it didn't match. So he couldn't say that I'm a different Paul. He just said, I'm not your father. So everyone was really confused because the first Paul admitted that he was the father. Okay. I am not a teenage rocker. Paul is her father. Monique. Uh, Monique is the mother of Michelle. Michelle is his little French daughter. I'm telling you the hard rub. I feel I say quite a bit of nonfiction. I cannot be someone who had died. Paul was glad for about a year. So he said, I can't, I cannot be someone who has died. So when, when he was asked later, why don't you, you've, you've taken all of Paul's fortune and you've taken all of his uh, his house and his girlfriend for a while until you guys didn't really get along. Um, and you've taken his name and everything. Why can't you also take on his children? He said, I'm, I'm respecting Paul's choice because Paul, when he was alive, he didn't accept full responsibility for his children. So if I respect, if I accept now full responsibility for his children, I'm going against his wishes. That's what he says. So he says, I cannot be someone who has died. He cannot be the Paul who died and take on the res the responsibility for his children if he didn't even while he was alive. Paul was glad for about a year. She urged him to raise their child together. So the mother of, of Michelle, Monique, kept asking, please, my daughter's now five years old. Will you please accept her as your, your, your daughter and raise let's raise her together? But he just wrote a song, Michelle, My Belle, in French and sent it. And that was his message to his daughter because he never talked to his daughter before he died. And he never actually physically met her. Just Monique sent a picture for her fifth birthday. And that's when he wrote the song, Sole mon qui bol très bien ensemble. These are words to go, go together well in French because he wanted to tell his daughter that, yes, you are my belle. But he couldn't just probably go out and say it. they were afraid that was going to affect the whole band if they were because none of them were married yet by then and none of them had any 
known girlfriend because they wanted to look like single party men because that was the whole myth of uh, the Beatles. Single bachelors, willing bachelors. Okay, <clears throat> so even though he had used her, he urged him to raise their child together even though he had used her. I am clearly a part of his whole. His child, Paul, was a stranger. His child, Paul, was a stranger. Without going into it, I am revealing the agreement. I am obliged to be Paul's. So he was he agreed to pay off Paul's money that Paul agreed to pay to these daughters, but not anymore because he's agreed to be Paul and he's going to honor his his wishes. I was frustrating some but he is the one I am honoring. So he said, some people were saying, well, you got so much fucking money. Why can't you just give her, give them more money now? And, uh, you know, they're requesting more money now that you're a multi-billionaire as opposed to a millionaire when Paul McCartney died. And he said, because that's not what the Paul McCartney that was alive wanted. So I'm honoring him. I'm not honoring them. So I was frustrating some, but he is the one I am honoring. So he's honoring the dead Paul. For the paternal suit, I submitted DNA. Bettina's clearly established well-known father was Paul. So it was established well-known that Paul was the father, not this new Paul. DNA does not have that impossible evidence of identification. So... It was established that the original Paul McCartney was the father of, uh, but I guess she's a bass player now in Los Angeles, but that's the same one, Erica, which I believe was Bettina's daughter. I think that's the bass player that's in Los Angeles. I can't remember now. And she wanted more money after he became even more famous. But he says, no, I'll take a DNA test instead. So... DNA does not have that impossible evidence of identification. I looked a lot like an imposter. The Beatles was big to Erica. This is the daughter. I cannot tell her if she wants McCartney to get it from Mike, Mike the brother. I would love to tell her. On the other hand, Mike is not involved either. So the brother's not involved in this lawsuit either. But he can't tell her he's the new Paul and he's not the same person. But the only thing he can do is submit DNA evidence, which kind of pro proves what he doesn't say. Because it, his agreement was to never say anything about it until this book. But this book is written as if it's nonfiction because he says the legal, the legal restraints of fiction is impossible to... to or the legal restraints to nonfiction would be impossible to put out. So I'm writing it as if it's fiction, but believe it's true. Okay, so where does it say that part? I really love that part because that's an amazing way of getting around this. So he says, even though I feel for her. No, where's that chat? That part in the chapter where he says this is this is nonfiction. But I have to write it as fiction because legally I can't say it's true, but it is. Uh, okay, I'll read that another day. But uh, that was like, wow. Because I want to say some secret things that I think I'm going to write as fiction even though it's true. Because that's what I did in my first novel because it was too overwhelming for most people to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, I she urged him to... Okay, we were, we're, what, without going into... The, okay. We read that. This is the end of the chapter. Going down. I cannot tell her if she wants Paul McCartney, McCartney to get it from Mike. I already read this part. I would love to tell her. On the other hand, Mike is not involved either. This is not the only... This is not the only Paul. He's not the only Paul. Okay, so the next chapter is driving backwards. Driving my car backwards. I'll read down the side. It says, drive my car one more time drive my car I'm 
a star. This pull, this pass is a is a gas. This pass is a gas. Drive. Drive it. This pass is a gas. This this roadway is a gas. So drive it. He says. Back. Backwards. Oh, drive it backwards. This this pass is a gas. So drive it backwards. Into the dark long and long long and lonely road okay drive it into the dark long and lonely road so that's the chapter that's called uh, drive my car backwards about baby you can drive my car and baby I love you it was about his dreams of dying in a car and he, he wrote it about um, instead of his always dream was he would pick up a girl and he would die in the car with her but he says I'm the star you drive my car because he doesn't want to die okay so let's I'm gonna read the uh, down downward girl downward which is again called stacking word stacking I am not your Paul on the album I notice every line it is driving me in a different style from a lover needing Linda, I use the driving image to see my severe loneliness driving me sad, but the entire song is of driving in the rain. Then, of course, there is a car with my babe who has passed away. So this is a few different songs, not only Baby Will You Drive My Car, they mixed a few other song lyrics, uh, like Don't Pass Me By by Ringo Starr, was also having the same message in the song. Paul really was found matted with blood. His hair was head was totally torn off and matted with blood. Okay. The trip was mystically experiencing the decapitation of the magical mystery boy. So the magical mystery boy is John, the original Paul McCartney the he's considered the magical mystery boy because he had all these dreams about dying and he did die so they considered him like some kind of a mystical uh, seer of the future and they kind of practiced a religion that he calls Paulism because they worshipped him after that and they did seances to bring him back and only the new Paul was able to really fully channel him and the other people didn't channel him they were all kind of jealous of that and they fought with him about it that's what led to the bands breaking up Okay, and the uh, in that album, Magical Mystery Tour, that was about Paul dying also. He's the Magical Mystery Boy in that movie. Okay, let's see. The Beatles used Preluden in Hamburg. They used to stay up late at night, partying all night, and playing long, long concerts, back-to-back -back, uh, shows, stay awake. Jane had understood the job of the Beatles. Backmasting began with the Beatles song. George Martin first tried it with John, who was happy to keep it backmasted. In the first instance, I took messages of Paul's death for us to tell secrets. So they used backmasting because your, your subconscious mind understands uh, things forward or backwards. So even if you're listening to a thing and it's backwards, the words uh, are turned around. You, the, your subconscious mind will get it. So they wanted to tell you the secret without telling you because they wanted your subconscious mind to know that Paul died. Even if they couldn't tell you uh, out in public, otherwise they would be going against their contracts and they would be fired or killed, which people believe they were killed, some of them, because of that later on. They were finally ready to tell the story that they shouldn't have told. And that's what killed them. But there's many other stories about that. I took messages of Paul's death 
for us to tell secrets. Okay. Yoko played the piano backward. She did it because it was the best song from the musical perspective. So the song, because the world is round, it turns me on. Na, 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 na. Yoko Ono liked to play Moonlight Serenade. And one day, John, after doing backmasking in the studio, he says, why don't you try to play the song backwards? And I'm going to try to do that. I've never tried to play. I've, I've thought of doing that in the past. But according to them, the, the, the tune, and I have, I think, I think I have that Moonlight Serenade. And if I play it backwards, I can write it out. It's much easier. But she actually, she was able to do it reading the score backwards. Let me see if I have Moonlight Serenade in here. A lot of classical theme of Symphony Number no. Five, like Calvary Overture, Swan Lake theme, Lullaby, Trumpet Volunteer, William Tell, many famous songs. I think it has this song too. Waltz from Swan Lake, Pomp and Circumstance, theme from Violin Concerto, uh, Radetzky's March. Oh, that's what we play in we play in my uh, symphony band, Serenade. What's the fucking song? Oh, Moonlight Serenade, that's not it. You and you waltz. Why don't I just look at the table of contents? This one's La Paloma. These are all very famous classical songs that are written for solo guitar. Moonlight Serenade, Wing Song. Doesn't have Moonlight Serenade. But she played it backwards, so if, I'm going to give you an example of how you would do that. You would have to actually physically, most people would have to physically write it out uh, to be able to play it. But I'm going to try like she did. And that's where the melody came for Because the World is Round, or one of the other songs that, that he's saying in this chapter was better than anything the Beatles ever wrote because they didn't really write it. They just stole it. So, for example, if I'm, I'm doing this song, See if I can play. I haven't played classical guitar in a long time. Well, it's better if I fucking tune up. Almost. A little out of tune. tuning by ear, especially when I got my ears covered, and the computer's kind of loud too. So if I play just that part backwards, it would be... That's it backwards. But according to this, he took one of the famous Beethoven songs and they wrote out the theme of the song backwards, which you can easily do by just writing it down, score out backwards. I was thinking of doing that before I actually read this book uh, and seeing if no one noticed that I'm playing a famous song because you can, your, your mind would, would, would actually know the song on a deep subconscious level, even though it has a totally different uh, chord progression because it's a backwards chord progression and have different melodies going backwards. So he challenged her to play. The, he used the melody that emerged to write because okay because the world is round it turns me on is from the Moonlight Sonata written backwards. I am of Paul or his death. Okay, that's where it ends. The next chapter is Born a Poor Young Country Boy. And I'm going to read down. I lived in the country song. I lived in the country songs for the town 
songs for the town. Okay, that's all it says. Frick, that whole chapter, that's all it says. I lived in the country. Songs for the town. Okay, so he wrote a song, Born a Poor Young Country Boy is the name of the chapter. Uh, the original, or the second Paul McCartney was actually a country boy, not a Liverpool boy. But he tried to copy the accent of Liverpool to, to get the part. Paul was raised there. I'm going down now. It is in Scotland where the holy people smell the grass. I want a good heart. The song begins on Danny Boy. Later, if I am dead, you bend and tell me until you come. You know about me. Well, that one doesn't really say much, does it? Okay, the next one is I was a session musician. That was the second Paul McCartney. He was a session musician before he became Paul McCartney. I'm going to read down first. It. It's hard to read these down sometimes. I, I've highlighted them, but I didn't write the words next to them. Okay. It. A tr oh, it attracted. It attracted my attention enough to do it for other others i was billy pepper with a thousand voices that's me, son, Paul, sang from his throat. So he says the original Paul McCartney sang from his throat, which is really tiring, which made him lose his voice a lot in concerts and in, um, especially when they did a long tour in in America every day for like however many days they did that long tour before he died when he got back home um, he had lost his his voice many times because he sings from his throat but the new Paul McCartney never loses his voice usually because he sings from his his diaphragm which is he's professionally trained so he says you can tell from the from how professional my singing is on the first album I sang on the first one I recorded was Penny Lane and the last one that the first Paul McCartney sang was Eleanor Rigby. And if you listen to Eleanor Rigby, the phrasing, and you listen to Penny Lane, you can see the phrasing is much longer. And uh, Paul McCartney always was short-winded, and he would he would get sh even a real short phrase in the song. He would almost lose his, 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 his breathing and struggle with it in the recording studio and also on stage. But the... The new Paul McCartney wrote longer phrasing, and he was he was able to take long, deep abdominal phrase breaths and blow his breath to keep his his voice solid through a whole long phrase, much better than the other one. So if he, he says, if you want to really know the voice difference, listen to the last song that was recorded, which was uh, by the old Paul McCartney, which was um, as I just said, Eleanor Rigby, and the first one that they recorded on the. And the new band was Penny Lane, and that was actually a, an old Paul McCartney song that they were going to record anyway. He ended up recording it. The first one ever was a real Paul McCartney song. After that, he wrote all the ones himself, and he ended up writing songs better than Paul McCartney usually. Much better than Paul McCartney, actually. And that's why the whole Beatles got so much better, because he was such a better songwriter, and he helped all of them and they all they all got better, of course, over time. Any songwriter gets better. If you listen to my songs from 20 years ago, they're a lot different than they are now. It's because I'm becoming a better songwriter. I'm becoming a better vocalist. Also, you listen to my recordings, it's better. But that that change between a couple months between the death of Paul McCartney and the, and the new Paul McCartney, you can tell the vocal quality is just so much better because he was a much better trained singer. Okay, now I'm going to read down the... the stacking. I also participated for profit. 
I became that work. As Paul had good times, I heard the songs were placed on records. You can imagine Paul McCartney all along. I helped them out a lot in Abbey Road Studio 2. So before uh, Paul McCartney actually died, he was one of the session musicians that came in to clean up a lot of their tracks uh, because he was a well-known session musician that cleaned up people's tracks when they were sh drunk or they were or they were tired or they were just fucking off in the studio because they were doing long, like, eight-hour studio recordings. And after that, they're like, we've done enough, we're going home. And they would bring in a, a professional guy to clean up all the tracks. So he, he did that already on... on Abbey Road Studio 2, he helped out Paul McCartney before he died, and Paul McCartney didn't know who, who the backup, because those are, they're never naming those people. So anytime a, a professional singer gets sick, and they have a recording studio already booked in a professional recording studio, and the band's all booked and everything like that, they just put a, another musician that has, a like this guy, a man with a thousand voices that can match good enough their voice, and that's what they just have to do. That was what it was done back then. Now it's like all digital, so you can, you can, even someone's sick, you can you can freaking pitch bend their freaking clean them all up so they sound perfect. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> okay, let's read more. I was big business for the love of music much more than mere illusion. I needed a name. So he was really good at music and all that, but he didn't have a name. He was a no name session musician, but he was really good at what he did. And he was hired for that in a lot of professional albums. Big bands like the Beatles. <clears throat> Billy Pepper did a Beatles song. So back when he was Billy Pepper and the Pepper Pots, he every one of his his albums, the first at, on the B side and the first on the A side was always a cover of the Beatles, and the other was original songs. And people said he sounded a lot like the Beatles. That's one of the reasons why he got the gig also. As Bill Shepard, I never made it big, but never lost the dream of the big time. So he was always wanting to be big, but he just never became big until he became Paul McCartney. It is like the Let It Be chapter. Everything works out. For me, Billy Pepper... For me, Billy Pepper, that's all. In a pinch, they would play a taped voice... For me to imitate by singing along the record the recording this is, he's talking about his days in the studio he's a session musician they would play like the live recording for the previous day of the real singer and he would have to match that by singing to the live until he got it so he almost sounded exactly like that and then he would go in the studio and he would sound just like it even sometimes when i record myself some days i'm like shit did i really record that it doesn't sound like my voice because every one of my songs i i sing a little differently so as you notice, even John Lennon on all the songs he sang on, he a little bit different voice style for each song. We all have a lot of different voices. So it's easy for a session musician to come in and do the recording of the vocal track after listening to the live recording over and over and matching it. I'm really good at that too. I can make myself sound like a lot of different musicians. A lot of the different famous singers if I want to. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. Cry all the time. I can sound like that if I want to sound like but I don't usually sing like that. Okay, but if I was asked to do uh, in Vegas be the uh, impersonator of, of Elvis I can do it I can sound just like him they were hearing the man with a thousand voices it was my reputation many clients valued it was my reputation many clients valued okay you cannot wait you still have to pay the studio I use my Vivian voice to be recognized as Vivian Stanstall on the Magical Mystery Tour film. I am the man. Having the right appearance, I look like Paul. So in the Magical Mystery Tour, they want to also give you a hint to what who he was in his past life before he became Paul in his even not this life, not really past life, but his past performance. They let him play his old band, which was uh, Vivian Stan, so play some of those songs in the Magical Mystery Tour and also dress up like he used to dress up as Vivian Stan still so he can give it away so you kind of like who's this guy it looks kind of like Paul McCartney but it's not really Paul McCartney anyway they actually had the uh, last Beatles movie I can't remember which one it was Sergeant Pe no not Sergeant Pepper 
I forget which one where they had the the Beatles didn't even act because they were breaking up at the time, so they had the Bee Gees act the part. That was kind of funny because they don't look anything like them, but they have good voices. Having the right appearance, I look like Paul. Okay. Looks are also on the album covers. Paul's lack of voice quality made him sound like an untrained teen, but he was not as innocent. I can hear his recordings. You can count on this most helpful book. Okay, now next chapter is playing with the bonzos. How long have I done this? Almost an hour. I'm going to end in an hour. It's 50 minutes. Okay, I'm going to read down again like I always do. Oh, I didn't highlight this one. This is going to be harder. I. No, it's harder. I, I got to go back and highlight it. So I'm going to stop here because it's really hard to read these if I just circle the first letter and not knowing where the words start and end until I actually read it through it and I can highlight one purple, one yellow, one red, and then I know where the words cut off. It's really hard to read like that. Okay, that's all because so much word recognition is actually how it looks. So you can actually, you, it's known if you change two letters in, in a long word, transpose them to like the beginning and the end, like say a word like indivisible, the V indivisible and the B you can change and your I can actually recognize the word because so you can have all the letters transposed like that and still recognize it because your eyes recognize so reading trying to read down the side of a page it's really difficult because you're not re used to reading down also not skipping and there's no capital letters and there's no spaces between words so I don't know where the words starting anyway so that I'm giving you my excuse why I can't do this but I'm gonna do it later okay that's all for today peace out loving granola we'll come back to you with the rest of it the more comments I get the more shares I get, the more hates I get, the more loves I get, the more I hate you, you're a fucking coof ball I get, the more points I get, the more money I get, the more I'll do more of these videos. So just hate it, love it, I don't give what the fuck what you do, but uh, comment down below, subscribe, tell it to your fucking grandparents, whatever. Alright, peace out. Love you.